So I've been selling on eBay for the last four years. And over that time period, I've been able to achieve over $100,000 in revenue every single year. So in this video today, I wanna to give you everything that you need to know about starting an eBay business, scaling an eBay business, and then maintaining that eBay business once you've got things up and running. Now, one of the biggest things that I've learned with selling on eBay is that you do need to have patience. So if you're unable to stick through the next 10 minutes worth of advice in this video, I don't know if eBay is gonna be worth it for you. All right, some advice for getting started out with selling on eBay. Firstly, I would say that it's actually not as much effort and energy as you think it is. I think a lot of people get caught out at this very first step, just simply making the leap to start. And if I think back to four years ago when I first started, I didn't really have that fear. I just knew that it was something that I wanted to do and I just thought that I would fumble my way through it until I learned how to do it. So I grabbed an item lying around the house that was gonna be my first listing. I pulled out my iPhone, I put it on the kitchen bench, I took some photos, I created a basic eBay account, uh, which was absolutely free as well. And then before you knew it, my first listing was up ready for purchase. And then from there, I just tried to work on efficiencies to make that listing better and the subsequent listings that I was to put on after that better as well. So don't get caught out in that first stage of just simply fearing the process, just make the start. Some other steps as well is I would definitely create a spreadsheet, just a really basic income and expenses spreadsheet. Just itemize out all the numbers associated to you buying the product or even just selling the product and all the fees that are associated with that as well. Um, I would say to get yourself an ABN, an Australian business number if you're here in Australia, just so that you're registered as a business because if you are trying to buy a product for the purpose of selling it, whether you like it or not, in the eyes of the ATO, you are a business and you do need to declare that for your taxes. So I would definitely recommend doing that, have an ABN, sole trader is all you need to be. And then finally, I would also separate your finances as well. So I'd basically have a business bank account that you can set up with any of the major banks. You get yourself a business debit card and then all of the money related to eBay is funneled through that bank account and you keep your separate personal expenses you know, in a separate bank account. So as long as you're doing all of that, I think to first start out, you're gonna be well ahead of the rest of the pack, well ahead of me when I first started because I didn't have a business bank account until six months in. And I was trying to juggle through all of my personal statements to try and work out what was actually business related. Um, so you can get yourself off on the right foot by doing all of those things. But most importantly, just make the start, take the leap, it gets easier. The next thing I would say as well is to make sure that you're setting yourself some goals when it comes to eBay. You're so much more motivated when you've got a goal that you're trying to strive towards. It might be the fact that you've got a holiday coming up and you could put that down as a goal, but I think a really good one for an absolute beginner, if you're just starting out, is to try and become a top rated seller. It's just such an important feature that eBay provides. If you become a top rated seller, you do get more opportunity through search um, for your listing to be found higher up in the search rankings. And it just looks in the eyes of a potential buyer that you're a really reputable seller on the eBay platform and eBay trusts you as a, as a seller. So requirements to get this status is that you need to sell $3,000 within a 12 month period and you need to have 100 transactions under your belt. Um, you wanna remain a top rated seller with 100% uh, positive feedback as well. Um, so these are three metrics that you really wanna be focusing on and I think it's an awesome goal to start out with. $3,000 in revenue and then having 100 transactions. So set that goal and that'll really help you along the way. The next thing would be as well to work out the postage costs. This is the next hurdle. Once you start, you've listed up your product and then you're trying to sell it. The next thing would be to try and work out how much to obviously go ahead and ship that item off for. And that is a really daunting task. But I, in the early days, I would walk into my local post office and I would just liaise with the person behind the counter and I would ask them, look, I'm trying to sell this stuff. Um, what's gonna be the most efficient and effective way to, to, to ship it? Um, the, the guys at the post office are more than happy to help. That's literally their job, customer service at the front counter. Um, and they can give you all the information that you need. You can take home pamphlets like I did that shows the, the different price points for what you're trying to, tr trying to ship off. So um, for me, I'm always using satchels, padded mailers, envelopes. I'm using boxes as well. So there are quite a number of different price points that you're gonna need to get your head around, but there's no other way around it other than building up that knowledge and understanding the costs associated to postage because it is ultimately, if not the largest expense, either the first or the second along with sourcing of the product, um, associated to your eBay business. So you really wanna know the numbers and I recommend that you go into the post office and just try and work it out as quickly as possible.
There are also a couple of different apps that you can use as well, the eProfit app and the eBay app. Now, if you don't have these apps when you're sourcing your products in the early days, chances are you're gonna make a bad purchase because it's these two apps that allow you to solely know that when you go to the checkout to grab your item and purchase it, it's gonna be profitable and it's gonna sell in a fast space of time. So we refer to sell-through rate uh, when it comes to eBay and we're looking on the eBay app, we're not only looking for how much the item sells for, but we're also looking to see how quickly it sells. Um, so really, really important step to be checking both the solds and also the active listings of the item that you have. Now, it's a really low sell-through rate. You potentially might not buy the item. And I think in the early days, I would just buy everything based on how cheap the item was. I would only look at a $2 price tag and think, absolutely, I'll go ahead and buy that. I never looked into sell-through rate. I never even looked into the solds to see how much the item was selling for. So there's a few things that you can be doing here in store with these two apps. And that one is the first one, the eBay app. But the second one is eProfit. Now, eProfit's something that I only got into after about a year of selling on eBay. I wish I was doing it on day one. It would have made me so much more efficient and a much better seller. eProfit lets me know exactly how much profit I'm gonna get after the shipping, the cost of goods, and all of the eBay fees are taken out. It's a free tool, a free download, along with the eBay app, but after the sell-through rate's been determined with the eBay app, you've got the eProfit calculator to let you know how much money you're gonna make based on the purchase price that you're seeing your item at wherever you are, whether it be a flea market, a garage sale, or a thrift store. So once you can see that profit on that calculator, you can determine whether or not you wanna to go to the effort of purchasing it, listing it up, and shipping it off. There's a lot of work to that process, process. So the eProfit calculator is going to let you know how much you're going to earn from all that work, effort and energy. So you kind of want to know that before you go to the checkout and buy your item. And that's what the app provides. So making sure that you've got those two apps on hand, in the thrift, in the flea, wherever you are, and actually using them before you buy yourself your first item, that would be a huge way to win when you're first just starting out. Creating a really consistent process and routine to, to an eBay business is, I think, fundamental to having success long-term. If you don't really have a plan in place as to how you're gonna go about it each and every week, um, you're gonna find you, you're gonna put yourself into lapses and, and multiple days of inactivity, and that's ultimately gonna significantly hurt your sales. Consistency uh, and patience, as I touched on at the start of the video, are just crucial to the success of an eBay seller. Um, so for me, in a really basic way of explaining, I'll always make sure I start my day with the shipping component. Now, you might be working in nine to five and you might be looking at eBay as a side hustle for you. So it could be a really good way to split up your day from a routine perspective. Before you go to work, you wake up an hour earlier and you just ship off all of the items that have sold for you. And then in the afternoon, you can go ahead and list up once you get home from work, the, the items that you've got to, to put up. And then from there, any customer service that you might have along the way, you can add into it um, in the evening as well. And then also on the weekends, you might go out and source some new product that you can schedule out and have listed throughout the week. That would be a really basic routine that you could find yourself getting into to make sure that you're doing it on a daily basis. And then from there, you're gonna see some sales results come through because in the eyes of eBay, you're an active seller, you're constantly on the platform, you're doing all the right things and they're gonna reward you with selling further product that you're listing up. So create yourself a really successful uh, listing and, and process habit um, will really go a long way for you. But finally, just seek some advice as well. All of the best people in business have had mentors to get themselves there. It's a feature that I use with this YouTube channel. The link is in the description. Any form of mentoring that you like, I'm more than happy to offer. I've got four years of experience with eBay. So if you are just starting out and you've got any questions to get yourself underway, I'm more than happy to assist. So you might be underway and you might have done this for a couple of months and you're trying to think now, how do, I, how do I build things up a bit? Maybe you're in this position right now where you've got underway, you've ticked that first hurdle, but now it's a matter of how to grow it, how to make a little bit more money. And I think the first thing that you really need to focus on is just using all of the tools that eBay provides. They've got so many features to help you as a seller. And yet so many, I think, of us ignore it because we just don't want to pay maybe some extra fees. Um, but the biggest thing is promoted listings. That is a huge one. That is about 60% of my sales. And I promote every single one of my listings, all 1,300 that I have in store, at a 3% worth of promoted listing. Now, what that does is it allows me to get higher up in the search rankings. More people will see my listing and more people have the purchase of opportunity to purchase my listing. So it's only 3%. I think I pay about 12% worth of a standard fee no matter what when the item sells. So just for an extra 3% to gain 60% more in sales, I think it's a no-brainer. You have to be doing it. 
Um, and if you're not, you're sacrificing sales no matter what you say. Um, best offers, I always enable those. I always send and accept best offers. I always get about 40% of my sales in the send or acceptance of a best offer feature. Um, so you need to make sure that you have that on. And then also promotion, uh, promotions, markdown sales. That's a really, really important step as well. You do need to have a subscription, um, whether it be just a basic store subscription um, to be able to utilize that feature. But if you are serious about it after a couple of months, you're looking to scale it up. I recommend that you move from a personal to a business account and then create that, that store account as well so you can be up and running with store promotions. But these little tools and tactics that eBay use are what everybody else is, uh, everybody else is using, so you may as well have that set up for yourself and capitalize on the benefits of using these features. The next thing I would say is when you're first starting out, you, you should be trying to sell absolutely everything because you don't exactly know what sells best on eBay. You might hear from certain people what categories sell well, but until you actually get into the nitty gritty of going out to your local thrift stores, seeing what you've got available to you from a sense of purchase opportunity, um, you don't actually know what's then gonna convert for you really well. So I think in the early days, there is a merit for just being an everything seller. Just grab anything that you feel you can make a good profit on with a good sell through rate, uh, and then just see how it goes. But over time, I think when you're trying to scale, I think it's really important to actually niche down into maybe two to three different categories. If I had to tell you my niches, I would say that I'm in video games, I'm in DVDs, media ultimately, and shoes. Shoes are another a big heavy focus. And just recently I've added electronics into it. So consoles for video games and those DVD VCR combo players. I'm sort of making that a fourth category. Um, but it has always just been those two, uh, two to three, media, shoes, and electronics. Um, and that allows me to go really deep in my knowledge on those categories. Rather than being a little, uh, having a little knowledge across the board, I've got super knowledge in the categories that I choose to sell. So I can, I can get really nuanced into the product and I can actually try to make a bit more money because I'm putting more volume into the product. Um, I would also offer international shipping. Now, this is something that you don't necessarily need to do when you first start out. Um, but as you evolve and you get a little bit more confident with the shipping process, I would go back to the early days of going into the post office and saying, hey guys, I wanna start selling internationally. What do I need to do? And they'll give you another pamphlet and that pamphlet will show you all the breakdown of the different zones associated to international shipping and the different postage rates associated to the different um, uh, weight of the item. Because when it comes to international shipping, it's the weight of the, the item that you're trying to sell that will determine the price along with the location that you're trying to send it to. So a really lightweighted item being sent to New Zealand is gonna be a whole lot cheaper than trying to send a one kilo item to the USA. So it's just trying to get your head around all of that. You can do calculated shipping with eBay as well. So they take the legwork out of the price points for you. However, I do think as a seller, you really wanna have your, your awareness around the price points and you do need to put that education in um, to have a good thorough understanding if you're trying to do it. So 10% of my sales are international. I wouldn't be where I am without it. And I recommend that if you're trying to scale after a couple of months, that's the time to turn on the international shipping. I would also say that this is the time now to hire help. Uh, look, I've personally got Courtney. Um, this was a good, probably two and a half years into me selling on eBay. I probably could have looked to have grabbed some form of assistance earlier than that. Um, I could have gone down the angle of looking at a virtual assistant, which is somebody that might maybe overseas. Um, and you can have everything drafted up or they can draft up the listings for you. You just um, verify that the listings are correct and then hit publish. Um, that is a massive time saver and you need to work out ways to save time, especially if you've got a full-time job, you've got outside personal commitments, whether it be social clubs or whether you've got kids. Um, whatever the case may be, life does get busy and the second we've been able to grow enough to be sustainable, we can then start to outsource some help. And the virtual assistant can be a great one. Uh, leaning on friends and family, maybe not offering uh, your kids if they're trying to get into some part-time work. Um, they can sit down and list up some items for you. You can teach them that process and pay them uh, some pocket money for the process. Um, and then finally as well, you could just go down the path of hiring a part-time employee as I've done with Courtney. Courtney works 15 hours a week for me at the moment. Um, she works two days a week, every Monday and Wednesday, and she handles all of my shipping and all of my listings. And my job is to create content and go out and find product uh, that I can issue to Courtney for her 15 hours a week, and she can cover out the entire week's worth of eBay in those 15 hours. And it's just been a huge help. It's been able to provide me with so much time off, um, I'm not working the 60, 70 hour work weeks like I used to. 
Um, I could do it all within a 40 hour work week now. So she's been a massive help and I recommend when you're trying to scale to always look for that outside help. The other thing as well is I would always try to source bulk buys. That's something that I've really evolved on over the last couple of years. A lot of my purchasing now is through bulk buys from viewers of the audience. This YouTube channel has been a really big plus in something I didn't think we would have available to us. And that is people reaching out saying that they've got large allotments of stock and we have the purchase opportunity to buy it. Um, just exposing ourselves and our business and telling people what we do has allowed these opportunities to come through. So by buying bulk, it allows you to get ultimately your purchase price lower. And when you've got really, I guess, dear price points out in the thrift stores at the moment and Facebook Marketplace is super competitive, getting all of this stock in one lump sum saves you so much time, but it also saves you so much money. And then you can focus on just sitting there and listing your items up and having that efficiencies of not having to run around and source your products on the weekend. So I would definitely try to buy bulk, whether it be wholesale, whether it be leaning on people in your local community or Facebook Marketplace, just getting, getting really inquisitive and speaking to people about the fact that you're trying to buy as much stock as possible in one lump sum. Uh, it'll go a long way to making you more efficient and will also go a long way to making you more money on the bottom line, your actual profits. Um, so that's one thing to focus on. The other one as well is what I alluded to just there is that starting the social media presence is a really crucial thing when you're trying to scale up. If you can, if you can work on some Instagram reels, some Instagram posts, maybe a TikTok post, uh, starting a YouTube channel like I have here, that, just that awareness, it's ultimately free advertising. When you use organic reach through social media, um, you're not having to pay for it to get your name out there and tell people what you do. You get opportunities through bulk purchases and selling goods online to viewers of your audience. Um, that can go a long way to helping you be sustainable and scale as an eBay business. So don't be afraid to make a start. It's a bit like starting out on eBay. You kind of just have to make that first post, make your first reel, uh, get that first item out there, and, and then from there, try and learn and evolve and slowly get better. Um, but that is a huge way to scale on eBay. So I would definitely say that I'm in this stage of an eBay seller. I'm in the maintenance stage where I've kind of scaled and now I'm kind of flatlining and we do the same amount of revenue every single year. I know exactly what it takes to do over $10,000 a month in revenue and we're gonna try and hit $130,000 in revenue again for another year. My goals with eBay is to keep it consistent at this number and work solely out of my single car garage and bring in around a 35% profit margin. Around that number is really healthy and efficient for us as a two person team uh, with YouTube that we've got as well for an extra part of the revenue. Um, so when it comes to maintaining, what am I doing to try and maintain it? Well, the first thing is I'm trying to reach out and network as much as possible. And a large part of that is actually done through this YouTube channel. I'm trying to make as much content as I possibly can so I can reach as many people and tell people what I'm doing. Along the way, obviously trying to help as many of you guys as possible as well. Uh, but on the counter to that, you are also getting your name out there, free advertising as I've touched on. Uh, it might be attending networking events. I've gone to some recent eBay events. I've met the team at eBay. Uh, and I'm, again, just further promoting what I do, shaking people's hands, telling them what I like to buy and sell, and the, uh, the amount of opportunities that have come from that have been ridiculous. I'm always out at my local flea market. I'm always speaking to the staff at the op shops. I'm telling them what I do, and uh, that has gone a long way. So that networking side of it from a maintenance perspective is incredibly, incredibly crucial. I'm also now just really trying to get further efficient in only sourcing high ASP, so average sale price stock. If an item's worth $50 plus, I'm gonna try and grab it no matter what the profit is. If there's significant enough profit, maybe $15 to $20, and it's a $50 sale price, I'm gonna do it. I think a lot of the time back in the early days, I would buy the item for $2 to try and make $2 in profit by selling it for 10. I did that for such a long time, and I sat back and looked at the numbers, and I thought, to maintain a really nice, efficient eBay store, Store, why are we putting so much time and attention into those cheap low profit items like DVDs that I was doing for so long? And ever since that, which was really an unlock at the start of this year, year four ultimately, um, I've moved into the process of just working on higher average sale price items, which is items like the DVD VCR combo players, those electronics that I spoke of as kind of a fourth category that we're leaning into. Video game consoles as well sell over $100 every single time. So this new category has been a really high ASP category and I'm making more profit on every single sale and I'm not having to generate as many sales to keep that 130,000 in revenue that we're trying to get. Um, so working on the higher average sale price would definitely be a focus, but I think also too, it's just an understanding of that you need to manage 
not only the new stock that you're sourcing and putting in, but you need to manage the existing stock. And for so long when I first started out, I never did this. And this is something you should be doing for maybe six to 12 months into your journey. By the time you've listed up some items into your store, you wanna be putting an equal amount of time on your store as opposed to going out and sourcing new inventory. And I just never got that. I never thought that. I thought once the item is listed, it's just there. Uh, but if you do leave these items for long enough, eBay is actually gonna go away and just wipe uh, the listings from your account without you even knowing. And that's because of inactivity and you haven't gone and manipulated it, you haven't adjusted it, you haven't tried to improve the listing in any way to get your items sold. And after about 12 to 18 months, I'm not sure of the exact time frame, eBay's just gonna go ahead and wipe it. So you really do need to do a bit of a stock take. Every six months is, is what I would recommend. And what you can do here is you can do an end and relist strategy where you actually will physically end all of the listings that you've got in your store. And then you can schedule a relist and just sell similar. And that'll obviously put the listing back up with a brand new order number. Uh, so in the eyes of eBay, it looks like a fresh listing, even though it's been in your store forever. Um, you can also price drop. Courtney spent a good two, three months going through everything and she was actually cleaning out all of the low valued items, which is no longer our game plan. So anything under $15 was actually removed completely out of the store. Uh, and then she also went and price dropped as well. So if an item was worth $30, uh, she'd drop it down to 25 and see if that would approach a new buyer. Um, that was a great way for us to pick up a bunch of new sales and also improve our store average sale price. Our store now sits at about $38 worth of an average sale price and our actual average sale price of sales is sitting at about 40. It's about $39.50. So we're much more comparable to what we've got listed versus what we have selling. And they're really two important numbers to be considering for your own store. And stock taking will really help you with that process. So doing that every so often, very, very important. Um, but I would also trial new products, which I've kind of already touched on, but we opened up that new category this year of electronics and it's gone on to do really well for us, so much so that it's kind of now a staple in our store and we are always looking for it. So definitely trial a new product, we're always learning, it keeps it fun, keeps it fresh. Um, so keep looking out there and just kind of be curious of other products that you see and go back to the fundamentals of doing the eBay app research and the e-profit to see if it's actually profitable based on the purchase price that you're seeing it at. Now recently I put a poll up on my Instagram and my YouTube channel and I asked you guys to see how much revenue you've done so far to the midpoint of this year and 70% of you guys hadn't yet reached $10,000 in sales. So I do understand that you guys are at that beginner level, you're just starting out, you're trying to learn the ropes and for that reason I have made a beginner's guide video right here which actually breaks down the correct listing process so that you can get your item found and sold for the best price possible. We'll see you over there.